Now it's time to have our Spring Boot application talk to Apache Cassandra. Before we do anything, what I need to do is add the Cassandra dependencies in my pom.xml. Right now, this application doesn't know how to talk to Apache Cassandra. So we're going to fix that. I do that by adding this dependency, which is Spring Boot Starter Data Cassandra. This is the starter dependency, which allows me to get all the things necessary for Apache Cassandra. Here's, a, here's an easy way and a, a convenient way for you to add any starter to your Spring Boot project if you're working on VS Code. First, make sure that you have the Spring Boot extension pack installed, right? This is important. Once you have this installed, uh, and if you don't have it installed, go here to the extensions, search for Spring Boot. You should see Spring Boot extension pack. Click install and you'll have it installed. Then, let's say you want to add a starter project. What you do is press Command Shift B, so you get to the command palette for VS Code, and then you search for starter, and you should see this command saying Spring Initializer add starters. Click on it and it, you have this menu of all the different starters that you can install. So let's say I want to search for Cassandra and it gives me two options, Spring Data for Apache Cassandra, Spring Data Reactive for Apache Cassandra. I'm not doing reactive this time. I'm just going to go with Spring Data for Apache Cassandra. Hit enter, then select. And now so ask me, are you sure? Yeah, proceed. And now here you see Spring Data for Apache Cassandra starter is now added to the palm.xml. Save it. Isn't it easy? This is a uh, pretty cool feature of the uh, Spring Boot extension pack for uh, VS Code that I use often when I need to add stuff to my palm.xml. So with this, we have the Cassandra dependency necessary for our Spring Boot application to talk to Apache Cassandra that we have on the cloud. Now the next step is to configure our application to know where to talk and what are the credentials that it needs. All right, so that we're going to do in the application.yaml file. We are now going to have our app talk to Cassandra, the hosted Cassandra instance, Astra DB. We're going to have our Spring Boot application connect to it, which means that your Spring Boot application needs both uh, the information about where the Cassandra instance is, right, the address, so to speak, and then it also needs the credentials for connecting to that Apache Cassandra instance. If you remember, we had created this token Right? We created a token for the database that we created for the Inbox app, and it had the client ID, the client secret, and the, the token, which I told you was a one-time only thing. I hope when you generated it, you copied it, or at least you saved that page or whatever somewhere, right? Um, we are going to take that token information and plop it into our application YAML file, right? So this is the application YAML file where we had the GitHub client ID and client secret. I'm also going to add the Cassandra related stuff over here. So this is, again, since it's YAML, I can do a nesting of these properties so that I can define these properties under Spring. So there is Spring Data Cassandra under Spring Data Cassandra, there are a bunch of properties that I can specify. One property here is the key space name. Remember the key space name that we created? We had called it main. That's the name of the key space that you want this application to connect to. And that is main. So this is good. So make sure you enter that. Next is the username and password. We don't have username and password for our uh, Cassandra instance. What we have is a client ID and a client secret. So I'm going to take those values and plop it into the username and password values over here. All right. So I'm going to take the client ID. I'll copy this and paste this to username. I'm going to copy the client secret and then paste this to the password. All right. So here are the two values that I'm going to put for username and password. Now again, the properties are spring data Cassandra username and spring data Cassandra password, all right? There is a schema action property, which basically tells the spring data Cassandra library what to do with the schema. So when you create entities in spring data, you annotate a class as like, yeah, this is an entity. I want this to be mapped to a table. The spring data library has all the information about what that table in Cassandra needs to be because it's mapping to it, right? So there is a very good 
uh, benefit of using Spring Data Project, which is that the library has all the information to create those tables if they don't exist. So you can actually have a schema action be like, well, I don't know if the schema exists or not. See if the schema exists. If not, just go ahead and create it. Like you can recreate the schema every time, which is, which is okay when you're uh, developing something, but it's definitely not okay when you're, um, when you're in production, right? Because this is essentially going to wipe out the entire database and it's going to create the schema from the scratch. Here is the uh, schema action enumeration, by the way. So you have create, create if not exists, none, which means don't do any action. Recreate, which means create the table as necessary. First, if it, you know, if the table exists, you drop it and then create again. Uh, create, drop, unuse basically means whatever uh, tables are in that schema, which is not a part of the current uh, entity classes that you have, you just drop them because they're not used anymore. And then uh, recreate the ones that you have over here, right? So typically, when you're in production, you would use none because you don't want the schema to be messed with because there is actually live data in production. I'm going to choose uh, recreate here because again, like if, if the table exists, it is going to, uh, it is going to drop. In fact, I think recreate drop unused is a good option because let's say I changed my mind. I'm working on a table. I've created a table and then I don't need it anymore. This is going to take care of cleaning out the stuff that I don't need. So this is the most drastic option that you don't want to use. Uh, but for development, that is, that's perfect. All right. I'm going to say recreate drop Aeneas is a good option to take for, for development when you want, when you really want the database to be wiped clean every time you start your Spring Boot application. And remember, this is only for development. Don't check in your code with this, with this value. Uh, request timeout, connection timeout, I'm set these to 10 seconds. You can basically copy the way the state of the code as is. You can type it into your application YAML or you can get it from the GitHub repository. Why is 10 seconds? Is that too much? Yes, it is too much, but we are also doing this for development purposes. You are on your laptop and your internet connection may be spotty sometimes. It's not reliable. It's not like an AWS hosted instance, which with a guaranteed uh, service level agreement in terms of what bandwidth is. You don't want to have to deal with timeout errors every time. So giving it a liberal 10 second timeout means that any one-off errors is not going to result in uh, errors that you see in your code. And you want to minimize external errors that you see in your code. When you're working on an app, any errors that you see needs to be errors that you make and not because of external issues. You don't want to get into uh, a rabbit hole of troubleshooting something. Why is this erroring out? And only to realize, oh man, this was just a timeout that I had set very low. If only that worked, I wouldn't have had to deal with all this troubleshooting. So to avoid all those problems, set a fairly liberal uh, timeout. It's like 10 seconds should be good enough for um, like even some fairly spotty internet connections to have to deal with this stuff. Again, you would change this when you are in production. So these are the values that tell uh, Spring Data Cassandra what are the credentials needed to connect to uh, the Datastax Astra DB, the cloud hosted Cassandra instance, and some parameters as well. Now, the next question you need to answer is where is this database instance? It doesn't know. By default, when you have Spring Data Cassandra installed uh, on your Spring Boot and you just run it, what it's going to do is it's going to try and connect to a local Cassandra instance, right? So if I were to spin up a local Cassandra instance, this is going to work fine. It's going to connect to it because that's the default. It's going to connect to localhost. It's going to connect to the default Cassandra port. I don't remember what that is, but it's going to work fine for that. But if it's an external Cassandra instance, you need to tell it where to connect to, which is what we're going to do next, right? So what I'm going to do is add these properties, all right? Astra.db.id, Astra.db.region, key space, and application token. These are the ones which are necessary for this application to know where to connect to, all right? So what's the ID? Well, if you go back to the uh, the data stacks UI instance, okay, before we navigate away from this thing, we know that there's this token value which we haven't ported over. So I'm going to copy this thing and put that in first before we navigate away, All right? So this is the application.token value. Stick that thing in there. And now you have got all the three values, this, this, and this 
from this page and now it's safe to navigate away. All right, so I'm going to go back to the home page and uh, from the dashboard page, I'm going to go to the, um, the database that we've created. You notice there are a bunch of values over here, right? So there is, uh, it says, uh, the region is West UX2. And guess what? That region goes over here. What's the key space? We already know that it is main. And what's the DB ID? DB ID is this guy here, right? The cluster ID. I'm going to copy that and then paste this here. We're not there yet. There's one last step that we need to do, which is to use the secure bundle. So if you go to your dashboard and then click on the uh, connect tab and uh, go to Java over here, you notice there is this option which allows you to download a secure connect bundle. All right. So this is a bundle which is specific to a certain region, right? We have multiple regions. You're going to have multiple bundles here. Right now, we just have one region. So just one bundle. We have to download this bundle and give this to our Spring Boot application. So, right, I'm going to click here and say secure connect bundle download. And I'm going to download and save this file. It's a zip file. And I'm going to copy the zip file over to my, uh, to my project. All right. Okay. I have copied that file and I've pasted it to my resources folder over here. All right. So here, SRC main resources has the secure connect uh, zip file that I just downloaded. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this secure dash connect.zip. You don't have to rename it. It's you can leave it as is. What you need to do is take that name and uh, put this over here in the application YAML file. And uh, this is the property that you need to use for it, right? So it's a data size turn Astra. And then you keep provide the secure connect bundle. This is secure connect dot zip. I'm not given a path here. There is a secure connect dot zip. Well, good thing is I have secure dash connect dot zip in SRC main resources folder. And SRC main resources in a Maven project is going to the class path, right? Any file that you put here to SRC main resources is a part of the class path when the jar is being built. So that's the reason why you don't need to specify a path here. It is going to start looking at secure connect.zip from the class path and it finds it because it isn't SRC main resources. And that's how it'll know. All right. So this is the application YAML configuration that we need to do for, uh, for having our application connect to Astra DB. Next, I'm going to go to my Java, this, the main Java file, which is the inbox app file. And this is what has the main method, public static void main method. I'm going to remove this user API because it's not needed anymore. We know that it works. We have a authentication mechanism and we know that the authentic after authentication, you can get the authentication principle. So we're good to go. We're going to remove this. What I'm going to do instead is add a method here, which is going to return a bean that helps it connect. It's going to take that secure bundle that we have provided in the properties and then connect to Astra, right? So I'm going to paste this uh, piece of code over here, which is, and of course, fix all the imports. This is a, a bean which takes in an Astra properties instance and then builds the CQL session builder customizer, right? This is necessary for using the secure bundle, right? It's here, notice what it's doing. It's saying Astra properties or get secure bundle dot two path. We're going to have to create this method ourselves, all right? So I'm going to create this class, uh, say create class and then create this method in that class. So I'm going to go back here to data stacks Astra properties. And here is where I'm going to create the class. The purpose of this class is to expose the, uh, the property that we've created here, which is, uh, which is this guy, right? Expose that to the, the SQL session builder, right? So what is this property? It's data stacks dot Astra dot secure connect bundle, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark this as configuration properties. And then this takes in a prefix value. And then I'm going to say the prefix for this configuration. What is this configuration under? It is under the prefix data stacks dot Astra. So I'm going to copy that 
and paste this over here. And now what is this property returning? Well, what is, what is it contributing here? It's contributing this property called secure connect bundle. So I'm going to use that as a property here, a property of this class. I'm going to say private. And uh, this is a type file because we want to expose the type of file, which is the zip file. And I'm going to call this the same name, but with camel case, right? Secure connect bundle. Okay, this is the name of this property. I'm gonna take this and put it as a, you know, a member variable of this, of this class. And of course, import file. And now I can create getters and setters for this. Source action, generate getters and setters. Okay, so now I can use this property in here, right? So now I'm using that, I'm getting the bundle uh, path of the bundle, right? So I'm saying get the secure connect bundle and then get the path for it. And then I'm returning a lambda, which does builder dot with secure connect bundle off this bundle that we've just got, right? So it's going to get that and, and build it. It's going to use the zip file that we've got and then build it. So again, this is necessary for your Spring Boot application to connect to, uh, Astra, right? There are, there were essentially three things we did. The first thing, was to create those properties in your uh, application YAML file, all right? Put all these values here. I see a typo here. This should be a dash, not an underscore, all right? Create dash. You see here, it's uh, it was giving me an error before, right? Your mouse over will tell me, see, recreate drop and use is unknown. I have to use either with all caps, underscore, or if it's lowercase, use the dash. I'm gonna use the dash here because I don't like to shout at the application <laughs> properties. All right, so uh, that part is fine. Uh, what are the three things we did to have this connect to our AstraDB instance? First is put these properties here to tell it to where to connect, right? And then use this as this property, uh, secure connect bundle that we exposed as a configuration properties class, right? Had the getter, the setter. And then finally in my inbox app, I used those, uh, use this bean and did a get secure connect bundle and then used it as a builder to create this thing called CQL session builder customizer, which is what enables the Spring Data Cassandra project to leverage this as a connection and then make connections to uh, Apache Cassandra. All right. So with this, we are, uh, we are good to go to build stuff, right? We can create entities and, uh, you know, this is going to uh, do the mapping to Apache Cassandra, all right? Uh, let me commit this so that you have the state of the code. But before I do that, what I want to do is exclude secure connect.zip from the git log. I don't want to commit the secure connect because it will not be a secure connect anymore if it's lying on GitHub. I'm going to go to dot git ignore, and then I'm going to exclude, and I'm going to call the Astra, and then secureconnect.zip needs to be excluded, all right? So now that thing is not showing up in the Git uh, comment. I'm going to add this as added, add a SDB connection for structure. This is what enables the connection happen. All right, now that this is done, and we can actually write the, the entity classes. So let's, um, let's actually start writing those classes in the next tutorial.